88 won the Berg, your music central. You are in the backyard burn with your boy Shane Dog Peterson and Mr. Noah Net. Noah, how are you doing this lovely evening? Yeah, I, I'm doing all right. You know, my, uh, my cat Cookie, who we've talked about a lot, was uh, not being the, uh, the best roommate this morning. And last night, he kept kicking me while I was sleeping. And uh, he actually kicks pretty hard for a cat. That is very poor roommate etiquette, especially coming from a cat. That's just a, that's just a shame. I wish Cookie would probably give you some more slack, but I think it's hilarious that Cookie gives you so much hell all the time. I think he really cares a lot. Like he wants me to be the best person I can be. So he he kind of he kind of whines at me at, at really good times, like when I should be going to bed. And he's like, you know, it's it's time to go to bed. And sometimes I just don't want to accept the fact that it's time to go to bed. But Cookie's right probably more than I am. I'm, I feel that. My dog, Bindi, tells me all the time when it's time to stop playing video games and to cuddle. So I get those feelings all the time from my pets. And, guys, if you guys still have any of your pets that you want to send our way, we'll put your pet on air. We'll take some pictures. We'll talk about how cute they are. You can send it to all of our socials at ShaneDog6, ShaneDog6, and – at Noah and Net, and you can also hit all of our socials at 881theberg on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 881theberg, your music central with the backyard burn, and you got Noah and Net and Shane Dog Peterson. Howdy, and howdy. you know what we're talking about? Unsellable Houses, my favorite show ever, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you were telling me before the break that this show that you've been on is your new favorite and it's it's got me a little bit intrigued so tell the people about what you know about this unsellable house show so there's these two uh girls that are twin sisters apparently they're identical twins to me they're more fraternal twins but um i'm i'm getting i'm i'm more on the train that they look similar but they don't look identical my parents think they look identical maybe it's just me not seeing it but uh Anyways, so they just uh, help these homeowners sell their houses that because they've just been on the market for a long time. So like either they've like already purchased their new house or they just have like a rental property that has a big issue with it. They're just trying to figure it out. All these house hunting shows and stuff are always a trip. Yeah. And this one, I think I just like it better because it's in Washington it's over in the uh, the Everett area and just kind of up up and down the the west coast of Washington. And there's just really cool houses on there. And, like, they have to, like, take trees out. But I think my favorite part is there's this guy on there that is, like, the guy that actually does the reno work. And his name's Jeff. And he just looks at them like they're crazy the whole show. <laughs> like, he's just, like... They're like, could you do this really ridiculous thing? And he just, he's like, kind of like looks at him for a while, just like a really deep gaze. And he's just like, you two have no idea what you're doing. But like they do, and he knows that. But like there's like this one episode where he actually has them sell his house that's unsellable. So it's, it's just a pretty cool show. That's interesting. Uh, my dad's a contractor, so when you talk about the people having these crazy expectations for their homes and their projects, I know all too well what that's like. And when we were talking more, I wanted to show the show that I have been super hot on. I've been hot on this show, ladies and gentlemen, called Slobby's World. Now, people are probably going, Shane, that sounds like a gross show, but hear me out. Slobby's World is about this guy named Slobby Robbie. He's down in Tucson, Arizona, and he owns a show called Generation Cool. Now, this dude has made a ton of money off of vintage clothes, vintage toys, vintage video games, all old stuff. The dude is a goodwill diver. The dude goes in the bins. He goes to all these different thrift stores all over Arizona and across the United States and gets these cool old clothes and basically cleans them, either repurposes them, customizes them, and then resells them for a profit. And some of this stuff is ridiculously cool, and it's got me way too hardcore on this thrifting hype like this shirt i got on right now look at this thing see that nice eagle flying against gets the old moon guess where this shirt's from boom 
You can't even see it right there. Boom. Reno, Nevada, baby. Guess where this shirt was purchased? The Ellensburg Goodwill. Guess how much it was? It was $3. And do I love it? It's probably one of my favorite shirts ever. Am I going to keep it forever? Most likely. I don't know why the whole thrifting thing has gotten me so hooked, but it all started with the show Slobby's World. The stuff on there is pretty cool. You learn a lot about sneaker culture, a lot about fashion culture. It also sees, shows you how you could kind of, you know, hustle and be an entrepreneur. And, you know, if you got a little bit of the fashion bug in you, you can make some cool stuff. See, I'm more on like the, um, I'm just preparing for the future with my stylistic choices. I feel like I'm just going to be a dad. So I might as well just kind of dress like it now and go on from there. But yeah. Just watch shows about houses and just be all judgmental about the property value. Be like, no, well, they definitely shouldn't do that. That's a bad investment. My favorite thing to do right now is predict what they're going to sell the house for. And <laughs> I look at like their evaluations. I got it wrong once because they sold it for the actual value of the home. But other than that one time, I keep getting like within like probably two grand of it. And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the simple things in life i can tell you i loved all that type of stuff i uh i like doing that with um oh god you, you always got to predict the different shows um i uh i definitely with definitely with the house hunter ones those ones are always really funny i love the couples that are you know do the uh, house hunters international have you ever watched that one yeah that one's hilarious there's the couples that just roll in and they're like Hi, I'm Jen. I'm 24 years old. And this is Ryan. He's 26. We're happily married. We're looking to move to Venice. We're looking for a beachfront property. And our budget is $45,000. <laughs> that sounds more like a dating game based off of how that person's personality was oh, rather yeah. than being married. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it just, you could just see the pain in the guy's face. He's just standing behind there just like, yeah, we're going to do it. Just like <laughs> nails on the chalkboard behind his eyes. Uh, yeah. But have you seen gonna, Island Hunters? Oh, Island Hunters? Yeah, There's an Island Hunters show? Yeah, it's the same thing, but like where they buy property on islands. It's, it's literally made by like the house hunters people. So they're, they go like to Hawaii and buy like condos on islands interesting i would be like if i had enough money to buy an island and i was on that show one of my first questions would be are there any areas where there's not like any activities of pirates that would be like my first thing that i would be concerned about is real day pirates coming in and trying to ambush an island yeah is this an I, I, here? no because like there's like all sorts of different types of pirates and who knows, maybe there's been like this secret society on like some Island out there. That's like, you know, some Jack Sparrow pirates and we just don't know about it. It's like the Island of lost toys, but people who want to still be pirates. Yes. There is a place for you. 88 won the Berg, your music central still in the backyard burn with your boy, Shane dog Peterson and Mr. Noah and net. Now, yesterday, there was a speech from our president, Mr. Trump, and he basically said something a little bit fishy that we kind of had to bring into uh, our show today that we also kind of curtails onto something more important. So Washington, Oregon, and California have all created the Western States Pact. This is basically a backlash at Trump yesterday, basically making the assumption and saying that he has complete total power on when the economy and when things are going to happen. Now, this being a little bit controversial for the fact that we have states' rights and rights as ourselves being, you know, citizens within the state, that we have our own power to govern our own selves. And also, the president did not remember the 10th Amendment. So a lot of this is like this crazy coronavirus stuff's going on. There's all this backlash going on. Noah, try to make some sense of this for me. See, when I, when I really go and dive into this situation – uh, I look at the three states in question, you know, you got Washington, California, and Oregon right there. They're all buttoned up next to each other. They're going to work together anyways. That's kind of how I look at that. But when it comes down to it, I just, I just have seen from like our state, everything I've been seeing from like Jay Inslee's interviews and, you know, watching the presidential uh, discussions, the Q and A sessions with the different people trying to figure out what, what's going on with the coronavirus as well. They've been kind of nipping at each other's heels for a while now, um, re regardless of like 100% who you think's right or wrong in the situation. 
Um, they've just not been as cohesive as a unit as they could have been. I think both of them are not on the same page with what each other's looking for. And I think that's really what sparked the issues. I don't know how it is over in California with uh, your governor. Maybe you can shed some light on that for me, Shane. Well, yeah, I mean, right now in California, um, we have Governor Newsom, who's uh, our new governor, who a lot of people don't like him. Some people are into him, but for the majority, people are not a huge fan of him. Uh, He went out and made a press conference statement yesterday saying that California is looking better than it thought it was going to look. Uh, The rates and the curve that we were expecting to have in California and some of the larger cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles and San Diego, some of those curves have not been as high as people thought they were going to be. So as of right now, they're still keeping uh, the mandated, you know, social distancing and quarantine till um, for some cities for uh, city of Los Angeles, I believe it's early June, but for the rest of us, I believe it's May 14th, something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, state of California is very interesting. One thing that they were uh, talking about, um, interesting enough, because one of the big industries in California, you know, is a lot of music festivals and sports. Uh, Coachella um, got rescheduled for October. The okay. last weekend was supposed to be the first weekend of Coachella, some of these big festivals. And it looks like right now, from what uh, the governor of California says, is that there will be no Coachella. So if you went and bought Coachella tickets, guys, I'm sorry, you're going to try to have to get a refund because they are basically not going to be able to open up until that there is a, like, a very sound vaccine that they've been able to have. That's what it's looking like for a lot of the different big sporting events. Even it will probably be like that for some of the Seattle sports fans, for you Mariners fans, Seahawks fans, Sounders, all of you guys are going to probably be affected by this as well. It's you can't be- refund your sports tickets. I just learned that yesterday. Really? Yeah, because uh, in one of my group projects, one of my group members was trying to get their money back for the Seahawks, or not the Seahawks, the Mariners, the Mariners versus the Red Sox series. That was one of the earlier ones. And so the way they're getting away with it is they're not saying the event's canceled. They're saying it's rescheduled. So it's it's like the event will go on just at a later date. So I think that's probably going to be the same situation with Coachella. They'll probably do something similar to that. I'm not 100% on that. There's a couple different options they could do. But for right now, that's the Mariners option was to just uh, reschedule the events and hope that the fans can come at a later date. That's what I think everybody's hopes are, especially in the sporting and entertainment world. But I mean, the thing is, is that we're, we're, when things get back to normal, when all this kind of settles a little bit, things are going to be fine. I think things will hopefully come back to normal. But the thing is, we do need to figure out a little bit of, we need to find a vaccine. We need to figure out something. So just in case, if something like this is ever able to make its way back up again, we can have a better chance of fighting it instead of being stuck inside for two months. Because if this is a reoccurring thing that's to come in the future, I'm thinking about going off the grid and becoming, you know, I'm going to be like Ted Kaczynski and go move into a cabin in the middle of the woods. Yeah. You want to do that? You want to be a prepper or something? Dude, I'm not, I'm not going to be a prepper. I am just going to just be completely off the grid. I've been learning a lot. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. I think I can live off the grid. So with all this craziness going on, I'm pretty sure I could do it. Okay, this is a side tangent, but it's just I have to bring it up, bring it to light. So you know the show uh, that's about the people in Alaska, the Alaskan uh, Bush people, the Bush people. Okay, my favorite. Okay, well you you know what that show is like thirty minutes from a Walmart, <laughs> which which just cracks me up. Yeah, my dad he like he's up in Alaska. He's a fisherman, so he was like, yeah. If you, look, if you look at that spot on a map and you know anything about Alaska and the town over, Walmart's right there. There, he's like, they're not really in the bush here. And I'm like, okay, Dad. Well, that brings a lot to light to me. Thank you for sharing that because there's – that makes me upset. Yeah, I was well, pretty furious too. I, I, I got I, – you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really upset. I was, I was planning on trying to go out there. I wanted to meet him. I think that would be an awesome experience, but now I can't take them seriously anymore. They're not real Bush people. Well, they're in Spokane now, some of them. Oh, they're in Spokane? Yeah, they're over in Spokane. 
Idiot won the Berg, your music central. We're back here on the Backyard Burn. Noah Annette, Shane Dog Peterson. And Shane, you have something about, you know, with New York. Uh, I believe it was New York University or University of New York. I'm not as familiar with the universities over there. I know they're Syracuse. That's about it. So uh, please enlighten me on uh, what was happening at the, with this NYU arts teacher. Yeah, so uh, NYU Tisch uh, School of the Arts is a art school in New York City associated with NYU. And they basically, many of the art students have been in protest saying that they want their tuition back. They don't think that the classes and the stuff that they're getting through online learning is sufficing or helping them enough to be able to reach their potential and do what they need to be able to do to graduate. So they're asking for their tuition back. They're demanding it. So their dean, her name's Allison Green, she decided to make a video in response to all of the students demanding their tuition in the best way that she knows possible, interpretive dance. This dean literally, literally, I, I cannot make this up. I will share this with you right now. You need, this is something you need to see. Look at, look at this here. Yeah, look at that. She's just like, that's, that's like part of her, part of her dance. She's just going, sorry, not getting your tuition back. And you could just see in this video, she's just sitting there shaking her hips, doing her own thing, jumping around. And this is her response to her students who are struggling to make payments that are struggling to figure out their future for their education and their finances. And she responds with, you know, doing a nice little jig. Can you believe this stuff, Noah? <laughs> no, I cannot. And for everyone that's listening on radio, she's basically just got her arms down and kind of moving them a little bit and then does she's a little doing, twirl. She's it's, doing, doing a lot of little little jigs like this, put the hands up in the air, a lot of little finger snaps. I wish I could tell you the song. I think she's listening to Stevie Nicks. So oh, that man. just makes it even better. I can't hear it through my computer, but I, I might know the song. But when it comes down to it, this NYU arts teacher is trying to get viral, I think, to raise some money here. That's my, my internal thought process. Well, she's not even a professor. She's the dean. She's the head honcho. Oh, she's the dean. Well, maybe she's looking to, yeah, maybe she's looking to raise some money or, some, or something for the students, get the tuition back. I don't know. Uh, when it comes down to it, it's kind of hard to deal with it when you're the, the dean of an area. It's like maybe there's someone higher up that can help her out, but that's not really my department. I don't, I don't know exactly how, how the budgets work to get everything back to the students, but they need to figure out something. That's abs It's an absolute mess. I could not believe it. I would absolutely be, I mean, it would be pretty funny to see uh, Gardino, you know, doing a little jig for us. But I mean, I think that that would probably infuriate the rest of the population in Central even more. But guys, if you guys have an opinion on this, you guys have a story about a professor, a dean, or somebody doing something odd to basically tell you, sorry, not going to happen. You can hit the line at 509-963-2311. Eighty-eight won the Berg here, Music Central. You are in the backyard burning. The fire's getting low, and it's time to call in the dogs. And you got your one dog here, Mr. Shane Dog Peterson, and alongside me, Noah and Net. Noah, it's been great talking to you, man. What do you want? What do you want to people to know? I just uh, want everyone to know that uh, there's ways to have a great day in this corn quarantine life. Uh, you know. Maybe open up a closet you haven't opened up in a while and check and see what's inside. You might find something interesting. Metaphorically and in real terms, you might need to go into your closet and then you might need to clean it out and maybe do some purging, have a fresh start on life, or maybe look into the deep, dark closets of your life and maybe, you know, figure some stuff out. Noah, beautifully said. And guys, thank you guys for tuning in again to another episode of The Backyard Burn. You can view all of our stuff on YouTube now. We have some of our videos coming up online. You can also listen to us on the 88.1 The Berg app and the iHeartRadio app as well. And you can reach us at ShaneDog6 on Instagram and you can reach Mr. Noah at Noah Annette. 
And don't forget, you can still reach us at 881theberg on all social media handles, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And everybody, you guys have a great rest of your evening. You will find us here again tomorrow in the Backyard Burn.